What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and I have a crazy video for you guys this morning that I've been working on all night as we prepare for the two massive live streams I'll be doing on the channel later today. I'll be live for the nuke event in Warzone in a couple of hours and then again tonight for the launch of Season 3. But in this video, we're going to be talking about Season 3 content that went live early, the new Battle Pass, and even some other juicy announcements that you did not expect. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know real quickly in the comments what are you most excited for in Season 3 let it be the nuke event or even something specific that is launching with the upcoming update but first off in the background we have some nuclear gameplay that i got on april the 20th 420 while using the brand new 420 stoner tracer pack so yes the character stone got stoned while using a stoner Treyarch knew what they were doing with that wordplay hopefully you guys enjoy that but the first part of season three is available to download on all platforms it's about 20 to 25 gigabytes for black ops cold war comes with a ton of early content that we'll be breaking down in this video and upon booting up Black Ops Cold War now, you'll see a brand new loading screen, as well as some gorgeous new lobby screens for multiplayer and zombies. Put those on screen so you can see. And yeah, we got a nice snowy background for the theme of Season 3. The intro cutscene has not released at the time of posting this, but I'm assuming in the next, what, 2-3 hours, we'll end up seeing an intro cutscene and gameplay trailer for the upcoming season. They should have dropped it yesterday, but for some reason just didn't. Not sure why that was. We then have new operator loading screens, as well as some confusion about a return turning characters so we have the new characters Wraith, Knight, Anatov as well as the man himself Captain Price so what's confusing here about Captain Price the description of his character does pretty much confirm that he is the same Captain Price from Modern Warfare 2019 which obviously does not make sense Task Force 141 didn't become a group until what was it 2019 in the new Call of Duty timeline so how is Captain Price with Task Force 141 here in the 80s it just doesn't make sense it would have worked perfectly if this was Captain Price's father which would have tied into Operation Charybdis, as I talked about in a previous video. Captain Price's father essentially was on a mission to kill Mason, Weaver, and Hudson, but I talked about that in a video that I have linked down below. They could have went with that opportunity and did that, you know, put Captain Price's father in this game that would have worked just flawlessly with the Call of Duty timeline, but they didn't. So, I guess you could say Captain Price is just not a canon character here in Black Ops Cold War. He's just here for gameplay purposes, but we also have a new Operator Randomizer feature that was introduced with the update earlier this morning and essentially allows you to, I guess, pick a random skin for any one of the characters. If you can't decide on what skin you want to use, it'll pick one for you upon selecting the operator of your choice. Pretty cool feature, but we then got something that I didn't expect at all. So there is a free Stitch skin that got added in, but then was removed about two, three hours after that. He was known as the Stitch Brute skin, but when you selected him and booted up in game, he was naked. So I'll put some images on screen so you can see. I'm not sure how this happened, but definitely was a mistake, which is why the stitch brew got removed very quickly and I believe the icon at the menu was also invisible which kind of indicated that he probably shouldn't have been in the game when he was added in maybe a free stitch skin is going to come at some point in season three but as of right now that was quickly removed upon noticing that yeah he was naked had no clothes on at all but we then have the new score signal as a straight front which went live with this new update and requires 5,000 score essentially the air patrol and napalm strike fused together so it can shoot down score streaks in its path and of course you enemies wherever you directed them to i probably won't be using this too much but they can help even on indoor maps for some sneaky kills if there's a window on the ceiling as well as taking out those enemy uavs so it's a cool score nonetheless but i'm more excited for the canine unit the hand cannon annihilator and of course the flamethrower all of which have been completed for black ops cold war since i want to say the beta those are ready to go but are just on hold until future seasons release that's just how it's going right now but we also had a glimpse of the Ballistic Knife a little bit early. So it is launching with the start of the season tonight, but you can actually use it a little bit early through private matches. So the new game mode Sticks and Stones, for some reason, is available in private matches right now. So if you boot into that, you can use both the Crossbow and the Ballistic Knife, I guess against bots if you guys want to. So you get a nice look at what the Ballistic Knives look like, and it never looked better. I mean, the Weapon Inspect is also amazing for them, as you can see. But I do hope we end up seeing a dedicated Party Games playlist added to Black Ops Cold War in the future. We are already got gun game and six and stones in this game maybe in season four five or six we'll get one in the chamber sharpshooter so we can have a dedicated playlist with all of those party games within that we've pretty much gotten every party game added to every previous black ops iteration so without a doubt we should hopefully see those modes at some point in the future we then got some updates regarding the season three battle pass so it goes live later tonight with the second half of this update and we got a glimpse of many featured items that might catch your attention but it's worth noting that Treyarch is supposedly introducing an instant 
infinite rebate option for the Season 3 Battle Pass, meaning you can claim all of the 1300 COD points that you'd be rewarded with from finishing the Battle Pass, except you'd get them right when you buy it instead of having to hit Tier 100. So it's a great opportunity for those out there that maybe get the Battle Pass and then can use those 1300 COD points to buy a bundle of their choice. I think it's a cool feature that was rumored about two months ago from Verified Insiders in the community that should be introduced with a Season 3 Battle Pass until further notice. We also have a female clown bundle coming in Season 3, which is supposedly titled Big Joke 2. It's also a tracer pack, so I wonder what weapon is going to be featured in this bundle. I'm sure Contract will end up posting all of the images of these new bundles later on today. We also have new skins for Sims, Stone, Park, Wraith, Woods, a few characters I don't recognize. You guys can correct me down below in the comments. And even the Survivor Adler skin that I'm assuming is going to be the reward for completing the Hunt for Adler event that's supposedly going to feature different challenges and rewards that are cosmetic of course in warzone there could even be challenges added to black ops cold War separately we're just not sure yet but we'll know more about that event starting tonight we also have some wicked looking skins for the ppsh which i am beyond excited to use and drop some nukes with over in multiplayer but it has been reported and even tweeted to me that you can use the ppsh early in zombies apparently through unlocking it in trials so go over right now hop into the machina hop into firebase do some trials and see if you get the ppsh if you guys do let me know how it is down below in the comments but we also have what is called the alien infestation mastercraft tracer pack a mouthful similar to the necro king bundle they released for the krig a couple of weeks ago and the necro king krig came with built-in cryo fees if you used it over in zombies so if you use the brand new infestation alien tracer it'll apparently come with some built-in brain rot if you use it in zombies i guess that makes sense it looks like this tracer is going to be for the m16 so i'm looking forward to this one i think the m16 is pretty overpowered over in colder multiplayer so it should be some fun. We have a new MP5 skin, which looks great. Hoping for some new Mastercrafts this season, or even some tracers that are for weapons that don't really have much spotlight. You know, weapons that don't have any tracers or have any cool blueprints. Because right now we've been getting a lot of different bundles and packs for a lot of the same weapons, which business-wise, I understand Activision is, of course, releasing packs for the most popular weapons, but there are some weapons that need some love. I'm sure you guys know what I'm saying, but there's also lots more content in this battle pass that we'll be seeing in the upcoming battle pass trailer. It should be dropping in a few hours and when the pass goes live tonight of course we also just got weapon tuning for lmgs shotguns the ffar the krig assault rifle barrel attachments and the smg sprint speed they've also added a combat record for league play in case you guys are interested and some fixes for split screen which i've seen a lot of requests for over the past couple of months i've been sent so many videos tweets reddit posts just proving this split screen doesn't work well in black ops cold where you have players going invisible you have crashing you have ui errors so many different problems that I believe should be ironed out with the launch of Season 3. That's great news, of course. Now, in Zombies, this is crazy, they've increased XP across the board, which is a big concern for a lot of the Zombies community, so luckily they listened to us with that. They've expanded the Outbreak objectives, meaning that they're a lot more randomized on all of the current playable Outbreak locations, so there were some challenges before that you just wouldn't get on certain maps. Now you can. They've also added new Intel to Outbreak, which does tease the future of Zombies DLC. A trailer dev over on twitter did confirm they're still working on classic maps outbreak is just something separate and i think as he described it outbreak is a way for them to provide more output in zombies aside from just working on classic maps with easter eggs which takes some time to complete so we're still on the same schedule of waiting about two and a half three months for a traditional zombies map that has an easter egg without a doubt they're still working on i would say the same amount of zombies maps they would typically release in previous black ops games but in between while waiting for those maps they're just going to be dropping a lot of content for outbreak that hopefully catches your attention to me that's great news now there are some calling cards that have been noticed over on the zombies menu which look like they're teasing berlin you see a background city some crazy bosses the dragon some very interesting and suspicious looking images that i'm sure are referencing the future of the storyline for the dark ether so let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comments and when do you guys think berlin is going to release season three reloaded or could it be an update that drops in like two three weeks before the actual mid-season update definitely a plausible possibility now here's the big one and this honestly blew my mind. Treyarch surprised the community by allowing us to finally earn new DLC weapons by just playing zombies. Instead of having to sweat multiplayer if you're just a zombies fan, now you can actually just play zombies and unlock any DLC weapon of your choice, and this is a feature that will remain in the game going forward. So they've added in-game challenges to unlock the Groza, MAC-10, Street Sweeper, Farah 83, LC-10, R1 Shadowhunter, ZRG Sniper, the Sledgehammer, Wakazashi, Machete, the E-Tool, as well as the Ballistic Knife. So essentially every DLC weapon that's been 
added into Black Ops Cold War can be obtained through zombies right now. Here are some examples of in-game challenges in zombies. So using sniper rifles, kill 50 manglers after destroying their armed cannons to unlock the ZRG. Using a special weapon that has been pack a punch at least twice, kill 50 special enemies to unlock the R1 Shadow Hunter. And using a melee weapon, kill 50 special enemies to unlock the E tool. So these are some pretty interesting challenges. They require a bit of grinding, but to me that's fine because zombies players out there are gonna have a lot to do once the weapons release. Now they're gonna be able to grind for a couple of hours to get some of the new weapons of their choice. And I would say it's almost the equivalent of grinding out the same similar challenges that are in multiplayer. So I'm very happy to hear this. Treyarch is definitely listening to the community at all times. This is definite proof of that in case you guys were doubting it. Now last but definitely not least, an article was posted yesterday describing what Warzone was originally going to be. They mentioned Afghanistan, they described the origins of the Gulag, how it was a different map at one point, and even mentioning how they pitched Warzone, I think in 2017, without worrying about what Treyarch was doing with Blackout. They always intended to have a dedicated battle royale that fit the aesthetic of Modern Warfare. They didn't plan on continuing Blackout at all, and that's referencing Infinity Ward, of course, but a ton of Spanish creators also made it clear on Twitter that they had a private meeting with Activision, like they didn't sign any NDAs, and apparently saw a preview of the changes being made to Verdansk with Season 3. All we've heard is that everyone gave a thumbs up to what's in store for the 80s Verdansk, and that's pretty vague, but still a good sign that the new version of Verdansk should be a lot more replayable than the original version. It was then confirmed that developers behind the scenes are already preparing for Season 6 of Warzone, which has me thinking that Cold War will likely only see 6 seasons, just like Modern Warfare, but that doesn't mean that Cold War can't get some side updates or even remasters, as opposed to Zombies Chronicles 2, added next year even when Call of Duty 2021 is active, right? I think that's definitely a possibility and could reminisce a bit on Black Ops 3, how Black Ops 3 got a year 2 and year 3 of pretty fluent updates. New weapons, new modes, new mini events, and of course, more Zombies remasters as well. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. I don't know how I'm awake right now. Managed to pump this video out before two very long live streams I'll be doing on the channel later today. You guys know the grind continues every single day here on the channel. You know exactly where to come for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. Really hope you've enjoyed. Patch notes are also linked down below in the description or will be once Treyarch releases them. And see you guys in the live stream later today. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everyone.